Hey guys and welcome to Kiwi Tech. Today we have a full review of the Xperia Z Ultra. Okay, so first we're just going to have a look around at the device and you can see when I pull off these little tabs we have O-rings. Um, actually, just let me just sleep this unit. Okay, so these O-rings protect the ports and stop water damage. And if you look closely, I'll just bring this up closer to the camera, you can see there's little bits of dust inside here. So just remember that if you do want to purchase this device after my review, that you just need to make sure that that dust isn't going to interfere with the connection or the seal of that O-ring. Okay, now just above the Sony logo, we have the earpiece. And down the bottom, we have the speaker. And if we cruise right around to the bottom, we have the mouthpiece. Now, these three entries, or speakers and microphone combinations, have a little membrane, like a permeable membrane there, that lets sound out but stops water coming in. Now, it's important to note that this will affect the sound quality, and the sound won't be as loud as you probably would hope for in a device. Now, upon doing some research, I discovered that salt water and detergent will be bad for this device. Not necessarily the screen or the connections or anything, but these membranes that cover the speaker and microphone will be affected and will perish under salt water and detergent. So fresh water is really the only thing you can submerge this unit in. All right, now let's have a look at this opening. Okay, so we have a little white um, piece of paper here that's a humidity detect detection piece of paper. Now that will detect if there's humidity in your device and if it does change a color then you have void your warranty. We have a micro SD card and we also have the SIM card and if I look a little bit closer you can see a little red button there. That is a reset button which is kind of cool. Um, although I have had to use that reset button a couple of times which um, stands to a reason that they've put it there because this device isn't a finished product and I certainly have noticed that the ROM or the operating system that this runs does tend to just randomly reboot itself. This has only happened three times and I'm sure Sony's working on a fix for the next update of their OS. Okay so now comparing it to my Galaxy S4 octa-core um, for all intents and purposes, it's just a Galaxy S4, and there is a massive difference, isn't there? You can see the size difference like that, and the thickness, the Sony Xperia Z Ultra is almost half the thickness of the Galaxy S4. And the build quality is totally um, overwhelming compared to the S4. All the glass sides, the aluminium, the sleekness of it. It feels really, really, really light. I know the S4 is a really light device, but imagine taking your battery out of the S4, and that's pretty much going to be the weight of the Xperia Z Ultra. Now, on the front side, you can see a Sony logo. Now, this actually is covered on top of a shatterproof protection screen, so it's it's almost got its own screen protector on top. Now this does actually have a bit of a glossy finish, so it does make it a little bit hard to see when you put it side on, but compared to other devices, it's still a very, very sharp screen at all viewing angles. Now the power button and the volume buttons on the side um, probably suit a right-handed person more than a left-handed person. Holding it in my right hand, using my left hand to draw on it, um, doesn't quite feel that natural. It feels like the power button's a little bit too low. Uh, going into software now, we look, we can see it's just very, very smooth to run. Um, the embedded file manager that Sony has is very, very quick, very sharp. It's very easy to copy items, like I'll copy all these wallpaper files, and I'll cut them out of here, go back to my external SD card, go into my wallpaper static, and then paste it. It's just very simple to work around. It's almost like a Windows Explorer sort of UI. Now if we go out of this and have a look at Sony's ROM itself, this actual Sony UI, it's very, very clean and very sharp. Um, going from my Samsung or TouchWiz based UI, which was 
well, a bit of a dog, really, wasn't it? It was, it was a great UI and had a lot of features, but because those features, it just slacked down. It was very, very stiff and slow. Um, this Sony UI is, is very quick. It's very sharp. If we go into the gallery, we can see that because this processor, this 2.2 Snapdragon 800, is very, very quick, and it just pinches and reorganizes those images really quickly. Now, taking a look at the Xperia Z Ultra screen, we have a 342 DPI. Now, if we compare that to other devices on the market, uh, it hasn't got the greatest DPI out there. However, because of, it's got such a large screen, and even if we try and really look closely, we can't see those pixels. It uh, has a very, very beautiful screen. The Triluminous and the X-Reality engine, I'll talk about the X-Reality a little bit later on, but the Triluminous, um, it does a pretty good job of having a few more colors out there. Um, it isn't as good as Samsung's AMOLED screens, but it definitely comes in as a solid second place. Now, one cool little feature that Sony offer is a theme. So if you can see on the top here, we have pink, a slightly tinged pink buttons. If I go back and change my theme, and I change it back to even the stock one that it came with. And I scroll down, you can see they've changed from pink and back to blue. So that's a cool little feature. You can keep that theme and you can change the wallpapers and the lock screen wallpapers, but keep those colored text fonts and icons. Now if we take a look at the app tray, we can see if we pull in from the left hand side, these options turn up. And one of those options is un uninstall. So we can uninstall any of those apps straight from that box. And we can also go straight from the Play Store or straight from the Sony App Store, which is, is a pretty cool feature. You can see how responsive it is. I've still got the setting for one animation setting in the develop options, but you can see it does pull really quickly. Now if we pull inside the album, we can see we have a Sense Me option, and that's almost like a, a slideshow. So we can set what sort of song we want, I'll just go for default, we can set the sort of animation transition we want, and I'll go for 3D, so, and you can screencast this to any device that's connected to a network, I've got an LG TV at home, 47 inch TV, and I can just push this straight to my TV through my Wi-Fi, and you can see we can put that in landscape or portrait, now in landscape that this is a perfect match for my 16 by 9 ratio TV and it works really well. I've had no stutter on that at all and that's really cool. When I use my Galaxy S4 going through my DLA network settings, my Wi-Fi, there was a little bit of stutter. I couldn't play movies. Um, this device seems to just push those movies to that external monitor or external TV a lot, a lot better, more efficiently. Okay, now let's talk about X-Reality. Now, soon you'll see two videos playing, one at the bottom, one at the, one at the top. The one at the bottom has X-Reality on, and the one at the top has X-Reality off. You can see the skin tones. At the bottom, it's a little bit like they've had <laughs> plastic surgery. It's a little bit fake. It's a little bit blended too much. Um, it certainly makes items stand out, and the backgrounds are crisper and clearer. The color saturation isn't quite right, though, is it? The top, it, the whites just look better. The face tones, they look more natural so Sony haven't really done a good job with them X reality for mobile let's take a look at the camera hardware and the camera software now Sony's X more RS for mobile sensor is actually pretty good it's the camera app that actually lets it down a little bit there's a little bit too much blur a little bit too much white balance you can adjust that but the auto function just really doesn't work that well as you can see the colors do come out very crisp and clear and I do like that and even if we zoom right in, it's not overly pixelated. There isn't too much blur there, and that's really good. I was expecting this camera to fall short, but it's actually not bad. If it had a flash, this would be a pretty solid all-round device. Okay, so I've taken a picture of my Xperia Z Ultra in normal mode, and I'm also going to take a picture with my Galaxy S4 in normal mode. So we have an 8 megapixel camera versus a 13 megapixel camera. So let's just see how this pans out. Okay, so we've got the two side by side. Um, I'm zoomed in a little bit too much on the S4, so let me just zoom in to match that. 
and zoom out a little bit on these four. So there we go. Um, the Galaxy S4 has a better looking image, but the color on the Xperia Z Ultra is far more natural. It looks far more like my tomato did. It's a little bit more crisp, and the tomato looks a little bit, a little bit too red. So saturation's possibly a little bit too high here, but zooming right in, they look pretty similar, pretty close. You can see a little bit more detail. You can see that little cusp in the tomato on that one. But overall, I was expecting the Xperia Z Ultra to be far worse than it was. I think with an upgrade from Sony and the camera app, this will be a pretty good little camera. Now clearly the lack of a flash is going to affect low light. Um, but to be honest, I never really used my Galaxy S4 with a flash. It just, just wasn't really that applicable for me. Now, I'll just take a picture of my hand. And let me go back to the gallery, to the album. And zoom in. Now that looks like a real hand, doesn't it? So if I zoom in, and I'll show you maybe my ring here. Actually, it still looks pretty crisp, and I'm zoomed right in there. That's, um, I think the most important thing for people buying this device is that lack of a 13 megapixel camera. But the, the sensor that they've got on this device, it actually runs pretty well. 13 megapixel would have been fantastic, but 8 does do the job. It, it, it does an okay job. You can see there's a little bit of noise around the edge of my fingertip. But overall, the camera it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Okay, now let's have a look at some synthetic benchmarks. Now, don't get me wrong, these are not reliable at all, but they do uh, compare devices and show what weaknesses and what strengths each device has. So let me just fast forward this right back to 100%. Right, so we can see that Galaxy S4 has a score of 26,400. Now that's my device, not the stock. And the Xperia Z Ultra has a score of 34,500. Now the good thing about the score is that it's not all CPU processor that's giving the Xperia Z Ultra such a high score. So that means that, that this device is actually a pretty good solid device in, in RAM, in I.O., which is input-output, and also the CPU. Okay, now one thing I want to show you was these tools in the Messenger um, application. We have an uh, embed image. We had to take a photo, and we could also use that to modify a photo. We have this little feature, which is the scribing or the sketch feature. And the last one is a location feature. Now, I think this is really cool. I, would, I actually use this quite a lot. When I have to message somebody and tell them where I am, I usually text down an address. I can actually embed this map and it actually comes with a location and telling them who it's from and I could send that straight away and I think that's a really cool feature I wish other devices had that I wish this Galaxy S4 had that I would have used that all the time now if we tap on this button here on the touch capacitor button we get to swipe away our last items there's also these little hot shortcuts that we can see that open tabs or open windows in our screen so this is an email little tab or window that's opened up and I'll type in Google and let's just go to that and you can see we can also move that around anywhere we want and move our home screen around so it overlays it on top I'll open up another one open up just a note taking app so we can take notes and have a sort of multitasking device right at our fingertips now it's not quite as multitasking as the multi window on the Samsung devices however this is a really cool feature and I actually have been using this more than the multi-window feature on my Galaxy S4. Okay, so it's game test time. I'm going to open up um, Asphalt 8. Let's go into Asphalt 8, and I'll show you how well this runs. Now, even when loading this game up, the screen that loads up the track does sort of skip a little bit on my Galaxy S4. And that's no slouch. That's a, it's a new device. It's a 2013 device. Uh, but this Xperia Z Ultra with a 330 GPU has zero lag. Absolutely no lag at all. And it runs so smooth on this device. Okay, so this is the first time I've installed this on my device. Uh, I did play it a little bit on my Galaxy S4, but I will need to start again. So I'll just go to the very first race. Now, as we can see, loading up this Nevada map, the pillars that will transition past, 
there's just no lag. This Adreno 330 is such a powerful little GPU. Okay, enough talking, let's just enjoy me playing this game. Okay, well, I was actually playing a lot better than I was um, expecting that time. Okay, so fast forward to the end of the race. First place, of course. So, gaming on this device is an absolute dream. The real estate, the size of the screen, enables you to actually see what you're doing and your thumbs and fingers don't get in the way. The actual bezel at the top and the bottom of the screen is quite beneficial. The bezel along the sides, though, um, as you can see at the moment, the bezel at the top and the bottom of here, and landscape mode could tend well I would actually love to see it be a little bit thinner um, however the bezel on the sides perfect great to hold in your hands like a real gaming device should be okay I think most of you know that real racing 3 does take a lot of graphics power and it does look beautiful and on this device running full screen it looks amazing I'm just gonna take a S15 for a test drive Right, so once again, this device handles this game absolutely flawlessly. It looks really smooth. It actually looks like you're playing on a console, doesn't it? This is a gaming device, hands down. Best gaming device I've ever used. But this is just fantastic. If you're a gamer, then this totally is the device for you. Now one thing I'm sure everyone wants to know is does it fit in your pocket? So let's have a look. So it does fit really comfortably. Um, I can sit in these pants and it feels fine. However, it is a big device and if you're wearing tighter pants or jeans, then you would want to pull it out of your pocket, put it on a tabletop uh, before you sit down. And to be honest, such a beautiful device, putting it on the tabletop is going to spark a conversation. I have only had this for a week and I have had so many people come up and talk to me about my phone. Thanks heaps for tuning in guys, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Please push thumbs up, write me a comment. This has been my review of the Sony Xperia Z Ultra. I definitely recommend this device, it is a fantastic unit. I have sold my Galaxy S4, it is that good. The camera could have been better, it should have been a 13 megapixel camera, but in saying that, the sensor does a good job of taking some quality pictures. Not as good as 13 megapixel, but it does a pretty good job. If you are in the market for a large device, I would definitely choose this one. There are a lot of other big devices on the market, but this one, it just looks fantastic, and I find myself wanting and making an excuse to use this unit. So thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.